Okay, big win for the Celtics over the Bucks. Uh, I don't have any big spiel or overreaction or long explanation about the state of the franchise tonight. Uh, I'm just happy we got out of there with the win. Jalen Brown, a very off shooting night, and the whole team came out shooting like crap, especially the first half. The bench, nobody scored off the bench except Aaron Baines in the first half, and a lot of our starters really struggled as well. Really nice to see Tatum get to the line five times. Jalen Brown got there six times. He just missed some shots. These guys found other ways to make an impact. Al Horford, incredibly huge in the second half. I think most of these points that he scored were second half. Huge third quarter, keeping us in the game, keeping our hopes alive. And then huge huge down the stretch. And Marcus Smart was big down the stretch, as he almost always is. If only he could check his sh- shooting selection a little bit better. And Terry Rozier had some really nice defense. Eight rebounds, you see two steals. So overcoming a poor shooting night and just making that impact, these guys are so good. In fact, a big part of that run in the fourth quarter came with Kyrie Irving on the bench and Terry Rozier in there. So you look at the Bucks and they have so much length at every position, right? And uh, I think Terry Rozier in the place of Kyrie Irving in certain instances gives us like a little more length, a little more athleticism, a little bit more of that versatility that the Bucks and some of these other teams are known for. Even the Lakers are starting to be known for some of that versatility with the longer Lonzo Ball and Contavious Caldwell Pope and Brandon Ingram, all those guys. Great game. Al Horford lighting hot, lights out. And uh, we really needed a big game from Kyrie. And uh, we, we needed somebody to step up because Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, young guys, teenager and a 21 year old, they're gonna, there's going to be some inconsistency. So they also didn't shoot very much. Tatum only shot th- six times. That's a little bizarre. But I get the feeling almost like the game plan, Jalen Brown didn't look like he was entering this game with a game plan that he was going to attack off the dribble every single time he touched the ball, which is generally how he should approach the game. But I almost think he was like, all right, it's going to be Kyrie's time tonight. You know, he was a little bit more deferential. And when he was shooting, it wasn't with a lack of hesitation and stone cold killer mentality that we saw the last three, four games. But uh, he found other ways to impact the game. Like I said, 10 rebounds and and against a Bucks team that has so much length and athleticism. Fact is, it is a little harder to uh, attack the rims relentlessly, especially at the start of the game when those guys are fresh because uh, there's arms just reaching in everywhere. And then you got the length of Thon maker in there so anyway guys uh just that's a quick wrap up Giannis continuing to look like an mvp almost a triple double with the three steals just unstoppable but shemi ojale played some great defense on him great defense great defense so much so that if you picture shemi ojale instead of daniel tyson there you know maybe that would have slowed down maybe that would have slowed him down a little bit the greek freak because uh shemi ojale our best combination of strength height length even though he's not that tall he's got incredible strength and uh he's the one guy who Giannis cannot go through with power or go around with quickness he can go around horford he can go through jalen brown but he can't do either against shemi ojale all he can do is pull up and shoot over him and that's how you want to defend him anyway so playing very much like a taller Marcus Smart, Shemi Ojale, he will continue to see his minutes rise in key situations, especially against freaks like the Greek. All right, guys, let me know what you thought of the game. I'll see you soon. Peace.